Evaporative coolers are cool. Over the past few years, I've done a lot of work with evaporative coolers, basically experimenting to see what makes an evaporative cooler the most effective. I've even gone as far as designing and making my own evaporative coolers. So in this video, I'm going to go over some of the experiments I've done and the information we can get from that, find out how to get the coldest air possible from an evaporative or swamp cooler. I do want to point out that a lot of these video clips are me using portable coolers and not outdoor units, but all of the same principles apply. So whether you have an indoor portable cooler or an outdoor one, doesn't matter. All of these principles apply for evaporative or swamp coolers. For my first experiment, I wanted to know if the water temperature makes a difference in a swamp cooler. If you read directly from Portacool's website, it says this, water can evaporate at any temperature between its boiling and freezing points. Between those points, the temperature of water does not matter. So basically, I just wanted to find out if this is true or not. It kind of seems like hot water would not be as great as cold water. So I tested this to find out exactly what the case is. For this experiment, I use ice water and hot water to compare. So I got the water from the tap. You can see here that the cold water is 66 degrees, while the hot water is 112 degrees. When I put in the cold water and used it in the evaporative cooler, I was getting 74 degrees. So remember, it's 66 degree temperature water the air coming out of the evaporative cooler was 74 degrees. So then I put in a bunch of ice to make it as cold as possible. And when I did that, I was getting 70 degrees. So I was actually able to drop the temperature by about four degrees. So the next thing I did was I put the hot water in and the temperature was 78 degrees. And that's compared to 82 degrees that was just the standing temperature inside the house at that time. So even when I was putting in really hot water, the evaporative cooler was still putting out a temperature that was four degrees cooler than the room temperature. And overall, there was an eight degree difference from the temperature with ice water versus the temperature with hot water. An eight degree difference actually is quite significant but it's not nearly as significant if you think about the nearly 60 degree difference from the water temperature being ice water to really hot water. So what do we learn from all of this? I would say the information that Port of Cool posted on their website is kind of accurate and kind of not. Obviously, the water temperature does make a little bit of a difference, but it is not a huge difference. It's fairly insignificant. So what I would say from this is especially if you have like a portable swamp cooler unit, a lot of times they will come with these ice packs or something like that. I would say, don't even bother, don't worry about it. It does make a slight difference, but realistically, the difference is not huge or significant. And it's only gonna last about 10 minutes tops before the ice melts and just becomes the same temperature as room temperature. I will say that there are practical reasons for trying to keep the water temperature as cool as possible, and especially the tubing going into your swamp cooler. Last year, I had some tubing that was out in the hot sun. The tubing got really hot and elastic, and it eventually just burst. So that's one reason just to keep it cool. Other than that, you can keep it cool and maybe get a one or two degree difference when you have cooler water than say if it's sitting out in the sun and really getting kind of hot. So for experiment number two, I wanted to see if the air temperature makes a significant difference. For this experiment, I actually kind of pointed all of the evaporative cooler units into each other, kind of a daisy chain effect to see if I could get the cold air from the first one going into the second one and so forth to see if the last one would have like a much cooler temperature. And doing this, I was able to get a starting temperature of about 76 degrees down to about 73 degrees. So yeah, it kind of worked. But the, the very first evaporative cooler should have been the warmest with all the others getting progressively cooler. And that wasn't really the case. The very first and the very last evaporative cooler actually had about the same temperature around 73 degrees. 
For the second test of this experiment, I wanted to test the inside air versus the outside air, which is much hotter. So for this, I used one of my portable coolers that I could kind of place in between the door. And we had an outside temperature of 90 degrees. And the evaporative cooler had a temperature of 80 degrees with the room temperature of about 83 degrees. So this evaporative cooler was able to cool the temperature down by about three degrees when it was using indoor air. When I placed it outside, I was getting a temperature of 81 degrees, which is a nine degree difference from the outside air to the evaporative cooler. I compared that to the indoor air, which was 83 degrees to 80, which is only a three degree difference. What we learned from this is that the air temperature obviously makes a difference. If you start with a cooler temperature, you're going to end up with an even more cool temperature. That being said, what really makes a difference here is how dry the air is. You'll notice that I only had a three degree difference when I was only using inside air that was already kind of humid. Compare that to when I placed it so it was getting the air from outside, which was much more dry. I was getting a nine degree difference. So even though ultimately I was getting a lower temperature from the indoor, it's probably a little bit better when I was pulling the outdoor air. And if you look at this chart, you'll see that 110 degrees with completely dry conditions can drop the temperature down to about 75 degrees. Whereas 80 degrees with very humid conditions can't even get the temperature down nearly as low. So, so the practical application for all of this is, yes, if we do start out with a lower air temperature, we will ultimately get a lower temperature from our swamp coolers or our evaporative coolers. But the main thing here is humidity. We want to get the driest air as possible. So an outdoor unit is going to work much better than a portable unit. If we do have a portable unit, putting it as close to the window as possible to get that air from outside that's our best bet. If you do have an outdoor unit, especially if it's one of those window units, putting it in the shade I think could help lower the temperature by maybe a few degrees, but it won't make a huge significant difference. And this is also something certainly to keep in mind if you want a portable evaporative cooler, just know that using recycled air from the house is just going to get more and more humid and the more humid it gets, the less effective it's going to be. For my third experiment, I wanted to know if the fan speed makes a significant difference. This was actually a really easy test to do. I just had to measure the temperature and then turn up the fan speed. And as I predicted, sure enough, fan speed makes no difference at all for the temperature coming out of the evaporative cooler. Now, with that being said, the fan speed does redistribute the air. So if you want to cool a portion of your home that's further away, a higher fan speed is going to help you achieve that as opposed to a low fan speed. Realistically though, if you've got a portable swamp cooler and you use it in a small room, the fan speed is not going to make a huge difference because it's just using mostly recycled air and the air temperature coming out of that is going to be relatively the same. If you have like a roof or a window swamp cooler though, the main advantage here of fan speed is pulling in the outside air and pushing out the air in your house. So you do need to make sure that you have windows open in the house so you can push out some of this already humid air and use the air that's coming from outside. And just remember that ultimately you're not going to get a cooler temperature if you turn the fan speed up or down, but you will help redistribute the air in different places in the house. So if you want a cool temperature just in the room where the swamp cooler is, I would just have it on low so it's a bit more quiet. But if you need to push that air throughout all areas in the house, then yeah, crank it up as much as you can. For my fourth and final experiment, I wanted to see if the swamp cooler pad material and pad size make a significant difference or not. I tested this in a couple different ways. For my outdoor cooler, what I did was for the good part of a year, I've been using these blue synthetic Duracool pads and I ran a test on these pads when it was 88 degrees outside. And when I measured the temperature in the room where the swamp cooler was, it was 78.5 degrees. So it's basically a 10 degree difference. When I measured the temperature in the swamp cooler, it was getting about 75.3 degrees. 
So then the day after running this test, I replaced these synthetic pads with Aspen pads, and I measured the temperatures again. This day was even more hot than the previous day. It was 93 degrees outside, but the room temperature was 76.1. So even with a hotter temperature outside, and, and I measured this at the same time to allow the house to heat up the same way it did the previous day, I was still getting a cooler temperature inside the room with the Aspen pads. So while I was getting about a 10 degree difference with the blue pads, I was getting about a 17 degree difference with the Aspen pads. The swamp cooler temperature with the Aspen pads was about 70.5, which is just 20 degrees less than the outside temperature. So overall for this test, it looks like the Aspen pads were about 70 degrees cooler than the synthetic pads. I didn't have a chance to try out the paper honeycomb pads, but last year this is what I was using in a different swamp cooler. And I can say from experience, the paper honeycomb pads are definitely my favorite and what I would consider to be the best pads as far as cooling the temperature goes. With the indoor evaporative coolers, I was actually able to take measurements of all of the pads to see what the sizes were. They were all basically the same material. And I put things together in a spreadsheet and unsurprisingly, I found that the biggest pads that had the biggest difference as far as cooling the temperature down goes. I will say what seems to be an even bigger indicator of how effective these pads will be is not just the square footage, but rather the thickness of the pads. From the data I have, it indicates that the thicker the pad is, the cooler temperature you are going to get. The takeaway here is use the honeycomb paper pads or aspen pads if possible and lay them out as thick as you can also if possible and that is ultimately going to be what helps you get the coolest temperatures. As an overall recap for this video, there's basically two main things that you need to do to get the coolest temperatures possible. The first thing is to use the right pads, use either aspen pads or the honeycomb paper and make it as thick as possible. That's really gonna help out. The other thing that's really going to help out is making sure you're pulling in the driest air you can, usually from outside, and obviously you have to live in an area that has really dry weather, and you need to push out as much of the humid air inside as you can. For me, I like to place fans in the windows and have them blowing out so I can pull out all of the air from inside and then bring in air from the outdoor swamp cooler, and this helps me get the lowest temperatures I can. There are other things you can do with your swamp cooler that will make a little bit of a difference, like keeping the tubing or the swamp cooler in the shade to keep the temperatures down low or turning the fan speed up high. But honestly, the difference that these things make is fairly insignificant. The real thing you wanna do is make sure you've got good pads and you're pulling outside air and pushing inside air out. As far as recommendations go, out of all of the evaporative coolers I tested for the indoor portable kinds, this new air one was my favorite and it, it didn't actually get the coldest temperatures out of all of my portable units. The one real advantage that this one has is that it has a bigger tank so I don't have to fill it up as much and it also has a really high fan speed which again this is great for circulating air through the house and pushing that air out just a little bit further. For outdoor units I've really only tried two. I, I have this window unit that's kind of just the standard design that you see a lot and then I also have the Master Cool Slim window unit. I have to say the Master Cool Swamp Cooler is amazing. It really, really lowers down the temperature and helps keep my house nice and cool. So I will post links below of these coolers if you want to check out current price or get more information about them. If you have your own tips or tricks about how you use a swamp cooler to keep your house cool, I would love to hear about it. Please write a comment below. Thanks.